Hey, so today we're going to be talking October favorites. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, I hope you all had a really really great October. Mine was amazing. I'm slowly kind of putting all of my things into line. I don't know where I'm going with this, but I don't know. It's been a really productive month. I've been really happy. Uh, things are kind of moving along the way I want them to. Lots of great projects in the works, meeting so many awesome people. Couldn't really ask for much more, but you know, you can always ask for more. Gotta always keep those go goals and targets or whatever. Hi, I'm just gonna get into it because I'm already rambling. <laughs> so it was October and that means fall is in the air and you know, it's really back to cozy and nothing says cozy like great candles. And the one that I've been burning recently is from Yankee Candle, but I took off the label because it was really, really ugly. It's called uh, the Amber Glow. And the best way I can describe the smell is that it smells like a really handsome man wearing sandalwood perfume, or not perfume, cologne. <laughs> Need I say more? So it's a really gorgeous scent. I actually wish it was a bit stronger uh, when it burned than it is, but yeah, it just smells like sexy man. <laughs> There's no way to say that. Next thing is kind of a representation of an event I went to. At the Rhode Island School of Design, they have this event, I guess every year for the last couple of years, called Mindshare. And it's a day about entrepreneurship, and they bring in different entrepreneurs who talk about their practices, everything from artists to kind of large-scale, almost corporations. So yeah, it was a great day to kind of just absorb all of their knowledge and take what I thought was applicable to my own life and also meet other people interested and the things that I am because I think that's really key to my personal happiness. I think being productive and meeting with like-minded people, especially while I'm kind of waiting to go back to London, is super important and yeah, made some really great connections and I had a really fun time and I had food trucks and it was just, it was fun. So yeah, and they gave us these free moleskins that they had printed at a local art space called AS220 which I thought were really cool and you can see some of my beautiful handwriting here and try and make sense of my nonsense, which I can't even do, so more power to you if you can. <laughs> Next is really simple, and I, I can't believe, maybe I did include them in my What's My Bag video, but it's been too long. Not the case so much. This is an old Topshop case from when I was about 17, probably. Uh, it's battered as such, but what can you do? But really, it's the Sunnies. They're by Cole Haan, and they're just some black Sunnies. They're a little bit different than a Wayfarer. I wanted something like this pair of Stella McCartney glasses that I had seen, but I wasn't going to shell out, I think it's 150 175 something like that, for them because I lose sunglasses so easily, so these were kind of a good compromise. They're still polarized, they're still really well made, so I like them a lot. The next is kind of a chiclet book, but you know what? I'm okay with that. It's kind of what I've been reading when I have a couple minutes to relax and unwind. And that is, is everybody hanging out with me? Or, no, is everyone hanging out without me? Not with me. That, she wouldn't have time to write this book if it was. And other concerns. I just started it two days ago, so I'm not that far into it. I rented it from the library like a real person, which I never do anymore. And uh, yeah, it's just a really easy, funny read. Kind of what I was expecting Bossy Pants to be and was kind of sorely disappointed by Bossy Pants. And I hate saying that because I love Tina Fey and I love 30 Rock so much, but I just felt like it was really self-indulgent. It was, I don't know, it kind of was the thing that my mom would write and then I would cringe reading. So I, I don't know. I, I mean, I hope for her daughter's sake that she doesn't feel like that when she reads it when she's older. I thought it was really well thought out, but it didn't bring the funny. And I was looking for a book to bring the funny. And this book brings the funny. And, you know, just very honest tales of her life. I don't leave the house ever, ever, ever without lipstick, as mostly anybody who knows me knows. That was hard to say. <laughs> and uh, with that said, my favorite this month is actually kind of a nude color. This is by Estée Lauder, and it's called Rosewood. And it's just, yeah, really simple. The packaging is really pretty. It's very 1950s. And why I like it is it's kind of that halfway house in between red and something a bit more neutral. I really can't wear anything more pale than this. It just washes me out and I don't look right. But then again, I don't always want to wear red lipstick from 8 a.m. So this is kind of a good transitional wear. And I find that I put this on in the morning and I'll leave it on until about 3 in the afternoon. And then maybe I'll switch to a red when I feel like I want to vamp up the color more. But this has been a mainstay in my collection. On the beauty trend, I'm falling hard back in love with Chance by Chanel, and this is the Eau de Parfum, 
whatever. Uh, I haven't used it in a really long time. This used to be my signature scent about two years ago. And then I have so many other perfumes, as you can probably see back there. So I got distracted, wasn't really that into it anymore. And as such, the uh, bottle is showing some signs for better wear. But it's a gorgeous, gorgeous scent. It's warm. It's very womanly without smelling old. That's the best way I can put it. I think it's Chanel's best offering for women in between 25-ish to 35. It's still youthful, but definitely smoky and classic and beautiful, and it really lingers on the skin. So this is definitely my signature scent once again, and I think it's going to stay that way for a while. So I need to uh, invest in a new bottle, <laughs> but I will when the time comes, probably Christmas. The other scent that I've been reaching for a lot, and definitely completely opposite ends of the scent spectrum, is by Marc Jacobs, and it's an eau de toilette range. I don't know if he still makes sense in this range, uh, and this is the ginger one. Very, very crisp, clean, but yet still sexy. I don't know how to explain it. There's some woodsy scents definitely lingering around the back. And I'll put this on and sometimes I'll top it off with a rose scented perfume. Chloe by Chloe is that great and I have the intense version of that. And somehow those sm smells, scents, whatever, work really well together. The packaging is also a really nice breakaway from some more traditional perfume packaging like this. So I like having the mixture on my vanity table. It looks really nice. This month I've been absolutely obsessed with outerwear and I've been buying it like crazy, which, uh, you know, I mean, it's useful. I just feel like in the winter, as the months get colder, you see the jackets or your outerwear so much more than you do the outfits underneath. And while I definitely don't want to be dressed like a schlep under my jacket, I think it's important to have jackets that you love because that's kind of the first impression most people have of you. And that's a very long way of saying I like jackets. So this is the least expensive in the bunch that I've just picked up and it kind of looks like something on the Matrix here so I'll have to put in a clip of me wearing it. But this is kind of my professional overthrow jacket that's still kind of trendy. It's mainly a pleather, it's just full leather, and then it has these built-in fabric panels that really make it quite tailored and the neck is collarless so it's something that I can always kind of just throw on on top of a dress for work or any kind of meetings and it looks great or I think it looks great anyway which is really all that kind of matters. <laughs> Next up is something that I've really had my eye on for a very long time and just couldn't really justify putting that much money into a wax jacket and then I realized that I was buying lots of jackets that weren't of the quality that I was looking for to compensate for not having one so I bit the bullet I'm really trying to get some quality pieces over quantity as I get a little bit older now and part of that was investing in a barber jacket. This one is from the Heritage line so it has some really cool details that not all uh, barber jackets do. It's also, I think this is uh, I don't know if it's a spring or summer barber really but I wanted something mid-weight that I could then layer under if I wanted to for the colder months but also still get some wear out of when it gets a little bit warmer but still I need something as a rain jacket. One of the really cool details is the quilted shoulders. It's not, there's no padding in there or anything but it just kind of gives it a little bit more of an edge. You have these really cool little pockets and it even has the uh, Barber International Heritage insignia which, I mean, is a little cheesy, but I kind of like it. It has a nice black corduroy collar, like most barber jackets do, in whatever color that they come in. And you find that same detail, obviously, in the cuffs. <laughs> I can't think of the word for a minute. And some nice gold detailing. I really like the black and gold. I think it looks super sharp. I also like this um, waist cincher, I guess, with the little bands that you can pull and adjust to how you want. This is just kind of a look of it here, but I will, again, insert a little bit of footage of me wearing it. I've gotten a ton of wear out of it already. It definitely feels a little country, but still chic, so I really like that. It's something that kind of really can dress down um, an element of your outfit if you're wearing something a little dressy for the outdoors, but in the same sense, it can kind of sharpen up something a little bit more dressed down, like a cable knit sweater. So I think it has this kind of morphing quality to it that I really enjoy and it looks really classic, so I really like that. Not completely materialistic, but some things fall into my lap and I, get, I don't even know what to say about it. It's, it's, I think it was probably Kismet. They only had one, it was in my size, so how can you say no to that? It's a black leather jacket by a brand called Doma. 
I'd never heard of them before, but once I was looking at their website, I was really impressed by the other jackets that were on there and definitely had my eye on a couple. But again, I'm trying to streamline my wardrobe to just really beautiful classic pieces that I can wear again and again and feel great in every time. So yeah, it's a black leather jacket. What drew me in was the motorcycle styling. So it has the big wide collar and this nice burnished gold zip which I think is really pretty uh, and also not very garish. It's something that's really quite classic. Is it going to focus? It's not going to focus, I'm sorry. And one of the other cool features is this double zip around the cuff. It's actually, it's probably not the most, most practical thing around, i got to be honest, because I'll usually end up doing this. I'll zip one down and cuff it over, but then you kind of have the awkwardness of the extra zip. But I do kind of like the choice because it allows you to have two different cuffed lengths because they are a little bit, one zips a little bit longer than the other, as you can see. So that's nifty. I think it's really sweet. And then finally, well, my voice is going all over the place. And finally, it's the cut. I wanted something very basic with a beautiful cut. And as you can see, really nice lines. Being a curvy girl, I really need pieces that fit me really well to accentuate my shape instead of hiding it and thus making me look a little bit bigger than I actually am. So it was really important when I was looking for a leather jacket that the fit be impeccable, even more so than details. So I found that in this jacket and I couldn't pass it up. So Christmas definitely came a little bit early for me, but the quality is beautiful. It's extremely buttery. And now I just need to worry about finding something to protect the leather because my worst fear is wearing this out and then a torrential rainstorm coming along and ruining it on me after I just found it. So yeah. Serious problems on my end, I know. And the final thing, nothing to help. <coughs> hey, Gigi, is a little, uh, is this a snit? I don't know, it's an eternity scarf that's knit. And I've just been popping this on on nights that have been a little bit colder. It's just really mid-weight, but it kind of matches everything. I really like the cable knit. It's really easy to wear. And it's actually from H&M in Sweden, and I think it paid like 50 crown for it, so it was super cheap. It came with these really dangly and annoying, um, pom-pom bits, but I just cut those off, so now it's just nice and neat, and I can wear it with anything. I can even wear it with my jacket, and, uh, well, I would hope I could wear it with my jacket, but I like the mix of textures, having something a little bit lighter colored that's this knit material against the black leather it makes a really nice contrast, and I think it pulls in. And I have to say, I do like the way it looks against my red hair, which I've just recently got uh, refreshed, so it's a bit more vibrant again because I went a little bit more brunette last time. Yeah, that's definitely like the most favorite favorites of the last year and a half probably is being a redhead. It's a, uh, it's a lot of fun. Sometimes it's a bit hard wearing things because I feel like it can kind of clash with some colors. So I've definitely become a bigger fan of blacks and grays and monotones. I haven't been able to stop wearing black this month. I feel like some weird extra member of the Adams family or something. But, you know, it's alright. <laughs> That's about it for my October favorites. So if you liked this and want to see more, feel free to subscribe, join the party. And uh, you can also like it if you want to see more favorites videos from me in the future. But more importantly, leave a comment so we can get to know each other better. And if you want to hear more from me yet, I always have my Twitter account, which is just at LWagner. I'll leave a link in the down bar. And Tumblr, which I'm really obsessed with at the moment. So that's just lwagner.tumblr.com. Again, links in the down bar, along with my Instagram account if you want to see even more from me. I'm going to try and start doing some daily vlog style videos, so that's in the pipeline. But, uh, whew, I think that's enough. Alright, yeah, so I will talk to all of you really soon. Hope you're having a great day.